Okay. All right, so hello everyone. My name is Anastasia and I work as uh, implementation service security engineer here at Labrinth. And today we'll be covering uh, what's uh, changed in, uh, in Labyrinth during uh, the latest uh, releases. We'll be covering uh, the release uh, 2052 and 2053. So let's dive in. Um, in case you have any questions, uh, don't, uh, don't hesitate to interrupt me. It's completely fine uh, because our idea today is uh, to, to get everything covered. Okay, let's see. Uh, let's start with a quick overview. Uh, so uh, main, main thing in uh, both uh, of uh, those releases, um, first of all, it's a major change in the way uh, we are working, we are creating points because uh, as for now, uh, starting from release 2052, users can uh, can configure their custom point types, uh, but still it is a option and you can run the system fully on our predefined points. And today we'll see the way it actually works, uh, how you can do this. Uh, in addition, uh, the new point type was introduced, which is client IS. Uh, we'll also see it in details, but uh, in a few words, um, it is a point that allows you to create, you know, a noise in your network to make it more alive, to make it more interesting for the attacker. And in addition, we have uh, some major improvements in our universal point. As you may remember, it is a special point type developed by uh, Labyrinth teams that allows you to uh, emulate available in your network web resources like in no time uh, so uh, and um, about a universal point we have added to it a web application firewall which allows us to get like more precise alerting uh, and more precise detection of what actually happened happening with the decoy and uh, talking about the system like overall uh, we have also added symmetry mapping. We'll see the way it actually works, the way you can interact with it, and etc. Uh, if you wish, you can uh, follow the links that you can see on your screen. Basically, it is our website. Um, just simply go uh, to the news. And from here, you can get uh, our release notes fully and with like more context. Uh, it's uh, and this one if you wish like for more content context okay so let's actually proceed and see uh the way we can actually work out with uh, with the new things in the uh in the platform and we'll go straightly to the live demo okay so first thing we need to do is to create a custom point type. Uh, on the screen, you can see four main parts of uh, each configuration. So in order to create a new point type, you just simply go to the points types. Uh, in point type basis, you can see uh, all of your available, you know, like uh, templates, like bases that uh, can be changed according to your needs. So we go to the point types. From here, we have uh, we can already see uh, some custom ones. Uh, those are not marked with the default uh, tick right here. So I'm clicking on create config, and from here we have uh, some bio basic things to fill in, which is ID. Okay, so let's uh, win. So for today. Uh, I would like us to create a custom universal point and also a few of uh, client tests in order to see the way uh, it actually works. So 
while discovering um, the way you can configure points, let's proceed to, uh, let's actually configure our universal web point. Okay, first of all, I need ID. Uh, this is a unique value for your custom point type. I'm sorry. Okay, next we have name. It's uh, maybe, it may sound similar to the ID, but uh, this is the value that you will see while creating or editing the HanaNet. And actually it can be changed if you wish. In my case, it's, uh, it's okay. We can proceed with uh, having the same values in both, uh, both fields. Next we see description. Uh, one of uh, the most important things right here is to change coin, a correct point type base. You can either scroll or just uh, start typing. I have my universal point. Next, we see that uh, we have some word lists. Uh, I will give a quick hint about word lists uh, for the newcomers. Uh, those are like text files, like uh, something similar to a dictionary, which will be used, uh, which uh, originally was used for creating your decoy. So you specify them while uh, creating a HANANET, and then uh, they're getting the values of host names, usernames, and passwords from the according word list. But for, uh, as for now, you can uh, also specify like uh, a separate word list only for um, for points of this particular uh, point type that you have created. Uh, it is not mandatory. It's like an option. For example, if you have like um, uh, you have some dedicated uh, services, like maybe you have some PLCs and you want them to have a separate word list. So you can use this feature. Next, we have tags for uh, for quick search. Let's add something new. Okay, and next we proceed to the actual configuration. Uh, the configuration is presented in the YAML form, uh, in the YAML format, which is uh, really common for, uh, you know, uh, in IT overall. And each of the options, uh, uh, any additional info that may be useful for you while uh, creating your um, while creating your configuration uh, is presented uh, in a form of documentation. You can see that uh, documentation is presented like uh, comments to each field. You can see the name of the option, whether it's required, and of course, uh, description. Sometimes you can even see some examples. We'll see them later. Okay, so let's see uh, which uh, uh, options does the configuration consist of, like what are the main parts. So as I said earlier, each uh, configuration, no matter of uh, what type of uh, point tables uh, have you chosen, um, it consists of four parts. And the first one is host name. Uh, you can set a static host name value for uh, all of the points of uh, that will be created of this type. Uh, it is not mandatory. If you don't specify it, uh, we will get this value either from this field or uh, like in general we do uh, from HoneyNets. Uh, next option that we have, uh, it is fake ports. So what does it mean? Uh, it means that you can specify uh, ports, some group of ports, this P and UDP, uh, that will be marked as filtered while a network scan. Uh, let's actually, we, we can add it and try to scan our, uh, our point that will be created. Uh, I'll be using the examples, but still you can, uh, you can add any values of your choice. So why do we need it? Basically to, uh, to, uh, <laughs> to make uh, a puzzle for an attacker to uh, give him like more ways of uh, investigation and etc. And give some, of course, some false info that uh, will, for example, guide him or, you know, 
uh, HI is a form of uh, manipulation um, as to the attacker. Okay, so next we have, uh, uh, I forgot to say that fake ports, uh, it's also not required. It is not mandatory. You can omit it if you wish. Uh, next we have uh, mark uh, prefixes. So basically you can set statically the first uh, three, you know, parts of your MAC address uh, in order if uh, you have uh, some specific organizational unit identifier, uh, for example, from uh, vendor. It's uh, it's really popular once again for SCADA and OT and IoT uh, decoys. Uh, yet it can be omitted. And the last part is uh, mandatory for uh, for each and every of uh, the point type uh, point type bases because this is the part where we actually configure uh, you know services actually configure uh, things that are specific to each of the uh, point types point types bases. Okay, uh, so. Uh, in general, you can, uh, in case of universal point, we can set uh, RP spoofing. Uh, we can, of course, um, we can, of course, configure HTTP. So in this part, the most important thing is uh, to set your upstream URL, which is basically a um, URL address of the host that you would like to emulate. Uh, next, we have server names, some basic things. Uh, also, from the latest release, you can set your rate limit. And uh, in case you like overreach this rate limit, you uh, you can set which um, which status code, which message will be presented to uh, to the users. Uh, another option that is uh, that is new from the latest release is adding some routes. So what does this mean that it means that we can um, actually uh, add not a non-existing paths, uh, paths that are not present in your uh, original uh, solution in your original web page. So as you may remember, we went for uh, for emulating our website. So let's see. Uh, so let's actually add some uh, fake path uh, to it and see the way it actually can work. Uh, for example, um, let's let's see whether we can get to the webinar. No, we don't have. Let's let's add this page. Uh, of course, you uh, you can use uh, the examples that are presented right here. Uh, from here, you can also see all of the options that uh, may be useful for us. I'll be using like um, a basic example. Okay, so let's start. First of all, we need to specify path. Uh, it should start from uh, from a backslash. Okay, uh, another important thing from here is to specify methods. So uh, basically it, it's, uh, it indicates which methods uh, may be used to get to, to your source. Um, let's actually put something. Uh, you can specify multiple of them if you wish, of course. Uh, okay. Um, Next, we need to get our module. So um, let's see. Here you can see uh, the description. Um, module is, uh, it basically indicates whether there will be something or will not. It can be like uh, empty response or there can be something. Let's actually add some text, I guess. Uh, another thing that we're interested in is a status code. Uh, let's see. From here, we can see the description. Okay. 
after the scout. Um, let's go for fall or let, let's have uh, let's have it in two in two hundred. Like okay, okay message. Um, also, uh, what we can do is uh, specify content type. Um, let's have it like an uh, HTML page. And of course, uh, of course, we need some content. Uh, content. Okay, um, to save our time, let's actually copy something that we have uh, already. Um, okay, I will just go for this. And I will have a simple header like Welcome to the webinar. Uh, great. And in addition, you can specify your custom headers. Let's actually add one more path for us to uh, to get like more cases. I will just simply copy the configuration that we did earlier. Okay. Um, great. So let's have it cut. This time we'll change our status code. We'll have the same message, but this time, as I said earlier, let's add some headers. Uh, for example, Of course, this is for uh, our uh, like test case. In your case, you can add uh, any hundreds of your choice. Okay, so everything seems fine. From here, let's actually explore what else we can do. Uh, scrolling down, uh, down, you can see more and more examples of what actually can be done. And uh, talking about universal point, you can also specify specify your TLS certificates right here. By by default, it uh, uses self signed certificates. But uh, if you wish, you can you can add your own. Okay, so let's click on create. Uh, okay, I see that I. Uh, made a mistake and I guess it's right here and right here yeah I'm sorry let's see and it was created successfully let's actually see the way it looks frankly we uh, added our um, our tags we can click on details and see the exact same configuration that uh, you and I were typing in and in addition, if you wish, you can edit it anytime. Uh, however, you can do the same with uh, the default, the predefined uh, point types. Uh, you won't. You will simply get a message. Uh, but yet, you can scroll and see the configuration that will be applied to your uh, point. Okay, so another thing that we need to do is to create a client as. Let's move back to our um, to our presentation. So uh, regarding client as, as I said earlier, um, its main idea is to um, is to get you provide you with some noise in your network and for this it makes uh, a list of uh, requests that you can see on your screens so um, it includes his name and domain name resolutions http requests uh, requests uh, via smb 
Uh, and in addition, it, it is still a point and we still need to get some detection. And for this, we detect RP spoofing, um, NVT, uh, um, LL, MNR, uh, MDNS, result poisoning, and of course, HTTP request interception. Um, so, but before testing, let's actually, let's actually configure it. We'll do basically uh, the same uh, that we did with our universal point. I will copy to the name point I based. I will choose client as X, of course. Uh, let's give the three options, three first options that are not mandatory and uh, proceed to to our actual configuration. Uh, okay, so starting from here, starting from services, what we can see is um, RP spoofing, of course, we want to enable it. It's um, DNS resolver, okay, let, let's, let's have it. MDNS is present as well. Um, uh, NetBS resolver, Okay, uh, we also need it. It is also a part of uh, mid detection. Um, HTTP client. This is where it gets interesting. In order to actually see the way we uh, the way we do the requests, let's. Um, I'll start. Um, I'll start like simple HTTP server. And we'll just see uh, the way it works. Okay, we started, we get our port. Unfortunately, I forgot my IP address, I have it. Great. So uh, let's proceed. From here, you can also uh, you verify your TLS and you should specify uh, the list of um, URL addresses that you would like to make requests to. Uh, okay. I will just simply change it. Copy my IP address. Um, of course, I need to specify the ports that Bison generously gave to us. And what's also important, uh, starting from the latest release, you can also specify your timeouts and timeout shift. So what does it mean um, is that uh, timeout is basically like uh, a time in which requests will be done. done. And timeout shift, uh, you can think of it like a noise. Uh, it, uh, uh, it is done in order to make uh, our requests not like uh, like it was um, generated, like it is a task for cron, but uh, um, we want to emulate that it's uh, real connections. So therefore we need a, this timeout shift. We'll make it much smaller because we don't want to wait. And timeout shift, I think one second will be enough. Okay. Uh, this is great. Uh, the rest of configuration seems fine to me. Uh, and SMBU, you can specify also um, which URLs you would like to send requests to. And uh, what what we forgot to mention is that client S can optionally respond to an, uh, an advice name resolution request. Okay, so let's click on create. Everything is fine. Let's once again uh, verify that we have everything that we might need for creating a continent. Yes, we do. So uh, I will, we, we won't spend time on configuring highlight. We'll just simply reuse uh, the one that we already have. Uh, but if you're interested in order to create a continent, you need like uh, some basic info, uh, which is um, a network configuration for the subnet that you would like to uh, have your decoys in. 
And of course, you should specify the word list that we were talking about uh, earlier. Okay, so let's generate. Let's see. So we have our client S. Let's have a few of them. And we have our universal points. Uh, but as I said earlier, um, creating your custom point types, it, it is not mandatory. You still can uh, go for uh, for some basic uh, pre-configured point types. For example, the same net bias, which is basically a predefined uh, client OS. Okay, so let's click on apply. And next we click on generate. And from here, we have to wait for a couple of seconds in uh, order to do points to start, you know. So let's see. And while we are waiting, uh, let's actually have a quick spoiler. Uh, another thing that we will be talking about today is uh, REST API. Um, let's actually see the way uh, the way the documentation looks. So I will copy the URL address. And from here you have uh, full documentation. So REST API allows you to uh, to do some uh, some things, including getting info about your license, about your tenants, uh, about your nodes, which is uh, info about your workers and admin tool machines. In addition, it allows you to uh, manage your decoys, your points. Uh, you can also delete them. And in addition, you can manage your alerts. So uh, not only getting info about that, but um, also changing its state, for example. Uh, this might be extremely useful in case you have uh, some SOAR or you have some uh, custom integrations that you would like to perform. But yet, if you have any ideas for, integra uh, for integrations that you would be particularly interested in, we are open to the discussion. Uh, so after after a quick call, we will just uh, have a plan, and in a matter of weeks, you'll get your ready solution. Uh, okay, let's see. So um, let's refresh. It's still generating. Uh, while we are here, let's actually configure everything that we might need for testing uh, for testing the API. Uh, for this, I will be to, to make it like uh, more interactive. Uh, let me see. I will get my postman. Um, let me just configure my screens. Okay, so. Can you see my screen? Okay, so uh, important thing that we need is to create uh, a token. For this, we go to the settings, users, and for that, we can issue API token. We click on confirm. Uh, important things to note here that if you, uh, that you can have only one token per user. So if you um, like uh, reissue your token, the old one isn't working anymore. Okay. For uh, testing purposes, I don't put any security like putting everything in the authorization. For us, it is okay. Uh, and we're actually done with configuring the API. We'll return to it later. And as far as you can see, our labyrinth is in generated state, which means that we can have our points up and ready, um, all of them. And we can actually start with, uh, I would say the most interesting part of this for me is attacking. Uh, to begin with, 
let's actually see the way our uh, universal web point looks like. Okay. And as you can see, uh, those are completely the same. You, you can't even tell the difference between them. Like I'm switching tabs and nothing changed. We can, we can go through different tabs, so resources as well. Um, but what's, what's more interesting for me is the contact form. And our original website, if you wish to leave any message or contact us, uh, you can simply uh, use this form and we will get your email. But what's about, uh, what's about our decoy? Uh, important note that each of the decoys in Labyrinth, it, uh, they actually have a layer of vulnerabilities to make them uh, more interesting for the attackers. And for this reason, we can try to uh, put I don't know, some interesting payload, for example, something that might be easy to do is, uh, is some kind of uh, uh, secure injection. Um, I, will, I have my payload already here. Next, I need to have my subject. And as far as I remember, our, uh, our develops uh, wanted uh, customers to get like a long message. Let's see, it's enough. Okay, uh, so we send our data. We can't see anything on our website, but can can we see something in alerts? Okay, so let's actually see. Uh, we have already. Uh, we can already see the alert, it's from today. You can check the date. Um, and it is from our uh, web application firewall about um, our secure injection attack attempt. So we can see our alerts. Uh, if you would like to get more info, you just simply click on alert and get everything. And from here, we can already see mapping to uh, to Mitra. We use Mitra Talk and Mitra ICS. So those are the links you can click and get more info about uh, tactics and techniques. Uh, so great. And of course, as you can see, we have uh, internal incident management. So you can manage those uh, incidents either from your web UI or from the REST API. We'll really turn to that. Okay. Uh, but as you may remember, uh, we have configured some additional path for this. So let's actually try to see. Uh, we have one with a cat method. Okay, let's uh, actually see. And we can exactly see our page. Let's actually see whether we have our custom headers that we have defined. Okay, yes, it is. Is it deception? Yes, <laughs> but, uh, but for your production, I, I would recommend to change it to something else. And um, we have absolutely the same thing with uh, our previous uh, record. We can just craft our request using, I will be using serial. Uh, we'll return to this tab later, but here's a quick spoiler about what our client S is doing. Okay, um, let's actually specify. Um, I can't remember, so it's put. Hmm, something really similar, uh, something uh, really simple because it's for our test purposes, so. I also need uh, the IP address, I need the URL. Okay, so um, it was simply 
webinar. Let's try. Uh, we have an internal server error which is uh, which means that our request uh, didn't get further than um, than our decoy. So let's see whether we have an alert. Uh, so yes, we can see that it was uh, we can see the method, what exactly happens. And we can also see uh, alerts about uh, attempting to access a non-existing route. Great. So um, do you have any questions regarding the uh, regarding the universal point from from so far? If not, uh, I believe we can proceed to our client S. So, as you saw, uh, as you saw earlier, uh, we see the, uh, the requests uh, from our client S. There are a few of them, so uh, that's why we have a change in our IP addresses. Uh, but I, let's actually try to attack them somehow. For this, I need my. Um, my virtual machine ready that will be uh, in uh, in the same uh, subnet in the same uh, yeah subnet that my uh, that my decoys and I'll try to perform for example a RP spoofing attack so let's actually try so this I will be using Hyper Cup. And of course, I need uh, I need an IP address, which would be in use. Okay, so let's type in. Um. So what else we need? Okay. Um. Let's let's choose. Uh, let's choose our interface. Uh, RP. Okay, IP address. Uh, I accidentally. Uh, okay, so yes, and to make things easier, uh, I will be using um, a gateway IP address to like as a second endpoint. Um, to me, everything seems fine. So let's try. Of course. Oh, okay. A typo sometimes happens. Okay. So we have started our mid attack. Let's see what we have in our labyrinth. So uh, immediately, we we'll see that RP spoofing attempt detected. It indicates that the attack has started, and when we finish it, let's quit. We'll get uh, another type of alert. So let's uh, let's wait for a couple of seconds. So basically, it will be uh, that, uh, okay, here it is, that RP spoofing stopped. Uh, in the same way, we can do uh, the same thing for net bias uh, and such things. For example, using the responder, uh, we can actually try to do this right now if I have it. Yeah, I do. So, uh, I will start. Uh, Responder needs uh, older ver version of Python. Of course, interface. I will use the same. So we started. We're listening for events, and in a couple of seconds, we will be 
uh, a sink that's a poisonous sensor was sent to, okay, we already see. Uh, great. Let's move back to our labyrinth. And we can see that we detected both uh, net bias uh, request and um, LL um, and R because guest responder, you see the, what poisoners we have enabled. And we're good to go. Uh, what about for us as uh, security engineers, it's uh, really important not only to see the, um, see the alerts, but also somehow to process them. And for this reason, we will be using our, our API that we configured earlier. First of all, let's do something simple like getting key license. Sent to, uh, okay. Let me check. Um, yes. Um, l let's check it once again with our API. So we need a API license. Yes. Let's add a separate user. Let's issue API token and try one more time. Okay sending the request and this time it's completely successful. So we can see the info about license and stuff, uh, which may be useful uh, for, for example, for your, um, uh, for, for, for keeping in mind uh, for, for some um, reporting, you know, okay. Uh, also, we need information about our tenants because we'll be working in one of them. So once again, I click on send. Um, because we created a user that works only in that specific tenant, we get info only about one of them. But that's completely fine. Let's actually see the list of points for this specific tenant I need once again change the authorization. Uh, I need a tenant ID. Okay, I will copy that. Uh, and we need to type it right here. Let's actually check with uh, our documentation. So this is about Hanunets, uh, it's about points. This is exactly what we are trying to do. So we need, so we uh, of course need the tenant ID, uh, specify points, and as option, you can set also um, page number and size. The way we can see it right here. Okay, let's send. So we, uh, with the info about each and every point that we have in our uh, specific tenant. So let's actually try to do something with alerts. Once again, need to change my token. Great. And uh, let's actually make it easier. Okay, click on send. And we get info about our, uh, our alerts. And from this, having the ID, we can uh, actually change the state of, um, of each of them. For this, we need uh, another method, of course. <laughs> uh, uh, if you don't mind, I will do it uh, in the same page that we did for getting the alerts to make the whole thing, you know, faster. Uh, okay, everything seems fine to me, uh, but we also need to specify some parameters. Uh, 
So let's have where is it? Yeah, it's here. Uh okay. Let's use uh the same that we did earlier. So okay. And it's JSON, so we want to close it. Okay, click on send. The set has changed. Let's see whether it changed actually. And we can see that uh, that as for now, our latest alert is in closed state. And we and we also get everything uh, in our audit log. So basically, this is all that I wanted to share with you today. Feel free to ask all of your questions. Uh, me and Marcelli will be glad to answer to all of them. And if you're interested in the platform, feel free to contact me or Marcelli or using once again our website, <laughs> not the decoy one. Click on contact, and from here you can leave a message and we'll quickly quickly process it and return to you with our response. We have our uh, POC free of charge. So you're welcome to try out the solution and decide whether it's interesting or not uh, particularly for you. And thanks for your attention. Any questions so far? Okay. So uh, if you don't know, uh, if you don't mind, I will stop recording.